Hi guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Git. Git is a free and open source distributed version control system which tracking the changes in source code during software development with speed and efficiency. It is designed for coordinating work among programmers and used to track changes in any set of files. After going through this session, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Git will be absolutely clear to you. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, Cloud and Containers Technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. So I, I don't know means out of you, how many are developers? Is there any developer who works on their development? Any one of you? Okay, so I hope no one is developer here. Okay, so no worry. Git is mostly used by the developers, actually. Uh, so uh, if I say, uh, if I say there is a developer and this developer is writing a code. Okay, and that code is everything because on the basis of this code which is our application code or application ultimately everything will be decided the testing will be decided on the on the basis of this move to production when your code move to production then servers are decided depending upon your uh, application and on the basis of your application the server security is defined how critical is your application and ultimately once it moved to production so from starting when developer writes the code and it moves to production so this application is very important and application we write the code we write the code um, in, in some programming language like you might be using Java you might be using Python, you might be using .NET, or some other programming language, Ruby language, right? So code is very important. Application code is very important. And safety of the code, if say an example, if this developer, he lose his code, then what will happen? Okay, so it is already in production, but if some changes are required, he does not know what code was there right because he has to write now from the beginning so it happens most of the time not most of the time where there is no code management the code is in someone's laptop or uh, someone desktop or or in the development server and that code already moved to the production the application build is already moved to the production but now the programmer left the job or changed the project. Now other programmer has joined and he has no fair idea. He, he has some uh, somewhat idea that, okay, this project is this and this may be available under this location. But if the code management is not good enough, then it will definitely impact to the production and production is used by the client so ultimately we need to manage our code we need to manage in this way that if there is a minor or major change happens into my project that should be recorded somewhere so that if a new programmer joins that project he should know the history of the project what has happened and what he has to do okay so for the code management we use versioning 
we use repository so what is repository repository means your code should be at some some location so say an example it is uh, something like this developer is uh, writing the code and the code is stored into some repository okay so, so your code is here and it may be possible that there are multiple developers are working on this code so they can access through this central repository okay so this is the central so if there is another developer other developer so all can access the code through the central repository so this is called the repository repository is nothing but where your code is stored and say an example this person or this person is going to update this code so that is to be recorded so that is called version okay so like you install a software you say it's a uh, java 7 now java 8 so the difference is that there is a new release or new uh, uh, some changes in the old version and that changes are implemented into the new version so that is a version control so one is the repository and second is so most of the time if you have a repository then version control should be there okay so automatically comes along with that so next is the version control so to achieve this motive we use git and github okay so in git and github we are going to talk about the repository as well as version control system so as a devops engineer you should know how it works but in real time scenarios it is most of the time it is handled by the developer only because developer writes the code and they upload or push the code into the repository and whenever there is any change if they make any change into their program then it goes into the uh, it is basically controlled with the version control system okay so this is what we are going to discuss today that is git and github what is the difference between git and github everything we will discuss okay so i have my notes uh, available on my github repository so i will give that url to you on the chat window okay so here on uh, you can bookmark this i have a lot of notes here related to gate jenkins kubernetes nagios chef uh, puppet right so let us go to git folder and here i have one pdf which is basically the documentation why git what is the role of git what is version control system okay so what is version control system version control system version control system are a category of the software tools that helps a software team manage the changes to the source code over the time so manage the changes to the source code over the time version control software keeps track of every modification to the code in a special kind of database if a mistake is made developers can turn back the clock and compare earlier version of the code to help fix the mistake while minimizing the disruption to all team members so what is version control system whenever there is a uh, developer who is writing the code and 
he makes any modification so that is to be recorded and so same example if you have version 1 and version 2 and version 3 so in version 3 you observe that there is some problem i need to revert back my changes to version 1 so that can be possible if you have version control system okay so let us move further now centralized version control system so in centralized version control system basically what happens this is a developer and there is a centralized version control system there is a server and on this server the version control system is installed now whenever developer is writing the code and he is sure that now it is to be saved into the repository so he will push its code to the centralized server okay not only he other developers also can push the code to the centralized server so the code which i have written here now it is available here right so so the version control is maintained by the centralized version so this central server is managing the code so the <coughs> major drawback is whenever this uh, so say an example this uh, developer is in india and the server is in say us so whenever developer is when say an example new developer he comes and he wants the latest code so he has to connect to the centralized server and whenever there is any update happens so he wants to make any update into the version control system he wants to create a new version then he has to connect to the centralized server he cannot store it on the local system he can store the files but that files will be seen by the other developers when it is on the centralized server okay so if you are using such kind of approach where there is a central server which is a version control system and everyone or every developer is managing their code to the central server if they want to see the latest and greatest code then they need to connect to the central server if they want to push the changes then they need to connect to the central server okay so the main problem in this is the latency that is main problem means so say an example this developer when he is pushing the code to the central server say, say an example one page and it is taking say five minutes because the server is in some other location so if it is taking five minutes so the the developer is a little bit hesitate to move each and every change to the central server because if he says that in a day if i am making 100 changes and if i move my 100 changes into the central server it consume lot of my time so it's better what i will do at the end of the day or at the end of the week what i will do i will club my all the changes and move it to the central server that is also fine but still whatever the developer wants it is not happening he is compromising with the infrastructure okay so this is the uh, case of the centralized version control system so what is centralized version control system are based upon the idea that there is a single central copy of your project somewhere committing a change simply means recording the change into the central system other programmers can see this change they can also pull down the change and version control tool will automatically update the contents of any file that were changed so it so everything will be maintained over here
<clears throat> now if you see the, in this diagram so we have a uh, sen, uh, client server model where these this these are the developer developer one and developer two they are move, uh, moving the file so when we move the file we call check in and when we pull the file we call check out okay so check in and check out so these two things are uh, happening to the centralized repository so this is the repository which has the latest and greatest code okay now centralized version control pull down any changes other people have made from the central server make your changes and make sure that they work properly commit your changes to the central server so the so other programmers can see them some of the most common centralized version control systems are cvs servers and control and perforce so these are you know some popular centralized version control system anyone has any doubt any question okay yeah i have one doubt like uh, you told like a centralized repository system is only one suppose if i have a two centralized repository systems so if i want to move the code from one repository to other repository system is it possible uh, that you can do but uh, uh, instead of having uh, you can do that uh, means actually most of the time the the source code is not that much heavy okay, okay? the source code is not that much heavy it, it is file right so the yes. size of the file is not that much big so mm -hmm. you can do that means in the most of the real time scenarios we have one server and we mm -hmm. have a failover server or backup server but and that is a replica any kind of things like uh, we can put between the sites so by default that functionality is not inbuilt in the version control system that we mm -hmm. need to do with the uh, means uh, our manual or custom uh, with the, our custom application or cron jobs otherwise okay. there is no uh, inbuilt functionality in the version control system which replica the things okay 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 anyone has anyone else has any question so i had another question uh, what if two people are working si uh, concurrently on the code then mm -hmm. who's uh, how, how will it get updated uh, how do they know who goes first and if they are continuously working okay. on for, for one hour then uh, uh, who gets updated first how does the uh, how does git know okay so yeah so yeah so that part we will discuss because here in the centralized version control system most of the time what happens so uh, say an example this is the say file one and this file one is uh, checkout we call it checkout it is checkout by developer one so when developer two is going to check out this file he knows that this is already checked out by the uh, developer one okay so but in case if he he wants to push it so whosoever pushing in the end okay so that changes will uh, that changes will go into the uh, as a version control but if both are simultaneously pushing the file then there is a concept which is called merge conflict okay and at that time your code reviewer he will come into the picture and he will check this developer has made the changes this developer has made the changes so let me check whether i need to merge the code whether i need to uh, whether i need to push the code of developer 1 or developer 2 so at that moment we need the manual intervention oh, okay so it's best so you're saying it's best that one uh, code 
one developer works at one version, one part of the code yeah. uh, at one, one time and not try to work simultaneously. Right, right. So, but that was the case in the centralized version control system. But now in the, we will, now next topic is the distributed version control system. Okay. okay. So where, where multiple developers are working on the same file and uh, so multiple developers are working on the same file. So how it is happening? So same example, there is a central repository. So the main drawback of the uh, centralized version control system is that everything is on the centralized version uh, on the centralized server. So if I if a developer one wants to make a simple change. So he has to connect to the centralized repository and if he is connecting to the centralized repository, then it is a little bit time consuming, right? So one or two changes is okay, but he if he wants to make multiple changes in a day, then he will hesitate to move that because it takes time. So to solve this problem, so there is an other concept which is called distributed version control system or DVCS. Now here what happens, this is the centralized version control system. So let us take an example The our project is available on the centralized version control system. Now developer one is downloading the project. So say an example, this is project one. So developer one has downloaded the project one. Same way on the same project developer 2 is also working. So he downloaded the project 2 or project 1 only. Okay, and developer 3 also downloaded project 1. So all all the developers downloaded that project. Now they, they disconnected from the centralized repository. Okay, now nobody knows that whether developer one what the changes developer one is doing developer uh, three also does not know what the changes developer one and developer two are doing so now they are working independently so same example there is a file one okay now this developer what he wants i want to maintain the versions for that there is a local repository get installed okay so this is a local repository so this local repository is similar to your central repository but it is installed on your hard disk so once it is installed on your hard disk then whatever the if it is on your hard disk it means whatever the changes you are doing and you want to commit it that will be very fast because it is on your system itself so now this developer is changing in, into the file say he's making change one change two and he's creating the version version one version two version three and so on now when he's making everything is on his local system still developer two and developer three cannot see it similar way developer two is working similar way developer three is working okay now in the end when 10 versions say an example in a day this developer one has uh, created now he want that these 10 versions should be visible to developer 2 or developer 3 so what he will do he will push in the end he will connect to the central repository and push the code to the central repository so once he push the code all the 10 versions 1 to 10 whatever he has made on the local repository will be pushed to the central repository once it is moved to the central repository if developer 2 connects to the central repository or developer 3 connects to the central repository they will come to know that these are the changes these are the commits which is made by developer 1 so in distributed version control system how it is different from the centralized version control system in centralized version control system we have only central server or central repository but in distributed version control system there is a local repository 
and that local repository works same as the central but it is only for a particular system or a particular developer so once uh, so developers can make the frequent changes and create the multiple versions without any hesitation that i need to connect to the central repository so once he is done with his changes or or, uh, or his versions then he push that code into the central repository so pull and push during that time he needs to connect to the central repository otherwise there is no need to connect to the central repository now the case if these are disconnected to each other now developer 2 does not know what the changes developer 1 is doing so case 1 that same example there is a common file file 1 if there are different file then there is no problem right if the, if if the files are different then there is no problem because developer 1 is working on file 1 developer 2 is working on file 2 and developer 3 is working on file 3 so if they push the code there is no conflict but same example all the developers or two developers they are working on the same file file 1 now because it file 1 is here and file 1 is here for developer 1 and developer 2 now they try to push to the central repository so once they are going to push it then there is a conflict happens now your code reviewer or the technical lead who is uh, responsible for this code he will check whether i need to push the code of developer 2 or developer 1 or i need to merge this code and push it to the central repository so that is uh, decided by the code reviewer okay so this is your distributed version control system in this scenario if you want for the local repository we use git and for central repository we use github okay so uh, most of the time it is asked it's a very frequently asked question what is the difference between git and github so git is your local repository and github is your central repository and if if you have a company uh, or, or if you are working in a company so they have their private account in the github so they have their own central private repository so their team can work on it so say an example if there is a say company abc dot github dot com so it, it will be something like that okay so then this particular uh, organization is having a private central repository which is so github is uh, you know uh, if, if in today's uh, lecture i will show you but git is publicly available it's a open it's a freeware right but if you want to make it private you can do it but you need to pay accordingly for that Okay, so anyone has any question for distributed version control system? What drawbacks of central repository is fulfilled by distributed version control system? Yeah, so the one which is which I was saying that if a developer he wants to maintain the if a developer wants to maintain the versions right so then now this developer need not to connect to the central repository all the versions he can maintain it on the local repository and it is whenever you are connecting to the central repository you need the network right so your system should be connected to the network then it uh, means you can push the code but here you don't need the network everything is on your local system you need the central repository ultimately we need the central repository but that is 
when you want to push the all the versions at the end of the day to the central repository Uh, is there any limit for the branches like uh, how can uh, like subfolders kind of thing so we will talk about the limit i don't think there is a limit it depends upon your hard disk size only so i i never heard that there is a limit for the subfolders or the branches <clears throat> okay so now okay anyone else has any question okay so, so uh, let us see the all, all the languages or uh, suppose uh, .NET has separate java has separate is there any packages we need to download for that see g uh, this git is uh, generic okay so you can use with uh, even with your uh java dot net php so almost it almost 80 percent i believe now 80 percent of the industry they are using git as a uh, version control system so but git is not specific to a language but now these days there are some plugins which we can use with the id of the language so say an example if you are using eclipse you uh, you will find the option to, pu to push the code into the uh, git so that options are available but git is a generic tool it's a open source and freeware okay now let us see the advantages of the uh, distributed version control system so performing action other than pushing and pulling chain sets is extremely fast because the tool only needs to access the hard drive not a remote server right so that is what we have discussed committing new chain sets can be done locally without anyone else seeing them once you have a group of chain sets ready you can push all of them at once everything but pushing and pulling can be done without an internet connection so internet means here networking i'm talking about so even for the if we talk about the git and github so you need the internet connection as well for github so you can work on a plane and you won't be forced to commit several bug fixes as one big chain set since each programmer has a full copy of project repository they can share the changes with other one or other two other people at a time if they want to get some feedback before showing the changes to the everyone so uh developer one has some changes made some changes developer two if they can communicate to each other by saying that this is my changes can you uh review it before i move it to it to the uh, central repository that can also be done with the uh, help of the distributed version control system so this is the logo of the git so git is mostly is most commonly used version control system today and quickly becoming the standard of the version control system git is free and open source version control system originally created by the linus torvalds in 2005 so it is basically um, it is invented by or it is created by linus torvalds who who is basically uh, the inventor of linux operating system git is distributed version control system means your local copy of the code is complete version control repository you commit your work locally and then sync your copy of the repository with the copy of the server okay so this is the advantage of the git so when we are talking about the devops so in devops uh, where this git exists so this is a life cycle of the devops and if you see 
code and shared repository so this section is basically uh, is is the git so this was the survey so this is little uh, old uh, survey i think 2015 or 16 somewhere so you can see uh, git was 69.3 percent it was used so this was the uh, insight uh, of the stack overflow and some sub version control this was the second number of version control which was used at that time that is 36.9 tfs mercurial and cvs perforce so if you see git is on the top now it is almost 80 percent uh, industry i think more than that now they are using git okay so now let us see how to do the installation so there are multiple ways to do the installation one way is that you can use windows or mac operating system whatever you are using and second is the linux operating system so what i'm going to do i'm going to show the example on the uh, linux operating system but i will show you that how to use the uh, how to use the windows operating system as well so you need to go to a okay so for this the the url which i have shared with you so this is having this so you can click on fork okay so once you click on fork so my notes will automatically comes to you if you have the github account okay so what i'm going to do so if i say download uh, git for windows okay so you will find the first link git downloading page so here you can see git for the windows setups 64 bit for the windows setup so if you are uh, if your operating system is 64 bit now all the operating systems are 64 bit so you can download this and the installation is very simple you just need to you know it's a wizard so you need to just click on next next button and in the end finish so it will install your git so once git is installed then if you go anywhere so say an example if i am in the e drive f drive so if i right click so you will find these two options git gui here or git bash here and we will use git bash okay so but i will show you how to do that so this is the way you can install the um, git for the windows now let us see how to install git for the linux operating system so for that what i'm going to do i have aws linux machines so i will take one of them if you have uh, any other source to connect to the linux system that is also fine but i am using this one so i will go to my ec2 instance and i'm going to create one ec2 instance so anyone you can use if you want to use red hat ubuntu so i'm taking ubuntu you can take red hat also so steps are exactly same so in ubuntu we use apt command and in red hat we use uh, yum command okay so that is the only difference so i'm creating one instance add tag and i'm giving the name as git server okay 
So next, configure the security group. Security group is nothing but just to open the firewall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my existing security group where it opens. Okay, okay. So okay sorry let me can start again so actually I... this is my separate account i need to connect with server Okay, one second, I need my phone for this. Okay, so I'm selecting EC2. Okay, so here I'm opening all the firewall. So I have already all traffic opened. Review and launch, launch. Okay, so I have created one Ubuntu instance. So you can connect with any SSH client like Putty. So I have mobile XTERM, which I use to connect to the Linux machine, but it is up to you. You can use PuTTY also or any other thing which you want to connect. Any SSH client is fine. Okay, so it is in the running state. This is the IP address. And default username for the ubuntu is ubuntu so i'm specifying that name and my key so this is my key and if i say okay Okay, so first thing what I will do, I will update my repository. So this is Ubuntu. So I will say up APT update. So now I am installing the Git. So Git is basically for the local repository. So I will say APT install git okay so 
git is installed so the command is apt install git if you are using red hat system then you need to write yum install git okay let me give this command on chat window okay now next i want to verify whether git is installed or not so i will use the command git hyphen hyphen version so this command basically shows that which version of the git is installed on your system all right okay so this way you can install git on your linux operating system okay so now let us see that here we can see the commands in windows if you want to create so say an example you are creating a project so if i create a folder called my project and you want to store the files to a, to the git repository then you need to use git bash here so git bash is basically is something which is very much similar to your linux so if you see here let me change the font size okay so it will be something like this so now you can you know run the git commands so if i say git init so it, it worked right so here actually it will create a so here you can run the linux commands as well so if i say ls minus la so you can see there is a git dot git directory get created right so you can run the commands here or you can run in the linux so i will be using the linux operating system but exactly same commands you can run it over here you need to use the git bash all right so anyone has any doubt any question all right so now uh, let us see here git hyphen hyphen version we can so you can see here also it is showing git version this is installed right now let us start our uh, git commands so now let us take a scenario Uh, let's take a scenario that you have a you want so this is the this is your system and you are going to create a project okay you are going to create a project and this project ultimately you will go and store it into the central repository but first you are creating so i'm taking this scenario that i'm creating a project and in this project i am just first creating my versions and after creating those versions i want to store it into the remote repository okay so this is what i'm going to do now so for that let me take an example that i'm creating a directory mkdir say devops directory and this devops directory is my project folder right so i will go inside the devops directory okay so now i am inside the devops directory 
So let me create a file, say touch one dot txt file. Okay. So I have created one dot txt file. Whenever we are talking about git local repository. Okay, so whenever we are talking about git repository which is on local system. There are three stages. Say an example I have created one dot txt file. And this file first thing how to how to create a git repository to create a git repository you need to use a command git in it so when you use this command in a folder so say an example i am going to run this command under devops folder then what will happen it will create dot git folder which is a hidden folder and this hidden folder will have some files like it it will have a file called head so head indicates that where your current uh, pointer is whether you are on branch one branch two master where are you so there is a config file so config file basically contains the configuration of your project only it's not a global configuration okay so everything related to this devops project related to git is stored in the dot git directory and this dot git directory get created once you run the git init command so let us see uh, whether that how it get created so if if i'm here if i say git init okay so if i say ls minus la so la is basically hidden directories it will show so now it is showing there is a dot git directory so it is a directory c d so now if i go inside this directory if i say uh, let me just install tree apt install tree command okay so tree is basically help to show the data in the tree so if i say tree dot it so you can see that there are some files and folders inside dot git directory right and these files and folders are helpful to these files and folders are helpful if you want to maintain the local repository of a particular project okay now so here when you create a whenever you are creating a project or a local repository then in that local repository you have different stages stage one is untracked file stage two is stage file or staging file and third is commit in a git folder if your file so say an example one dot txt file which i have created so when you create this file this file is initially untracked file this file is initially untracked file means this is not tracked by the git repository then we use add command so if i say git add one dot txt so when i run this command what this will do it will move this file from untracked to staging file 
and staging file it's still not committed so it's not uh, once you say commit so it will basically create a version so up till here there is no version get created now then you need to say git commit minus m some message meaningful message so now this file get committed into your local repository and it will create a version and that version by default it it will be created that version number is given by the uh, git itself so but we can create our version name also but here it will create so these are the three stages first it is untracked then it is in the stage and third it is committed so let us see here so if i say git status so git status command basically tells that there is one untracked file and that is one dot txt so if i say git add one dot txt now this file moves to staging so how to check it git status so now it is saying no commits yet and changes to be committed this so it means it is uh, if you want to unstage that is uh, this command we need to use but if it is in the staging now it is applicable for the commit so now if i say git commit minus m and if i say one dot txt is add it so now the commit is done okay so when you did the commit at that time it is giving some warning it's not an error but it is a warning what it is saying you have done the commit but your name and email address were configured automatically based on your username and host name please check that they are accurate you can suppress the message by setting up ex explicitly run the following commands okay so what this is saying so before doing that let me see, check git status so it is saying on your master branch so what is master branch we will discuss about that but on your current repository there is nothing to commit okay now let me talk about the configuration <sighs> there is a command which is called git config so git config command basically indicates the configuration of your git it can be local local to that folder or it could be global so what is the meaning of local and global local means if i am talking about only devops folder my project folder then it is local if i say for all the folders wherever that uh, configuration will be applied then it is called global so git configuration is local and global so local configuration always uh, have preference as compared to the global so say an example on the global level if you set a email id so you say my git dot email id is this much uh, say abc okay but for a project if i say git dot email if it is global this is global and this is local email id is say uh, def now this has more preference so if you record your git changes it will be recorded with the def folder not by the abc but if you don't have the local local configuration or local email address then it will take global one 
okay so this is the difference between the local and global configuration now when i committed at that time what it said that you have not configured the username and the email address so it will take whatever the username and email address you are logged in is it okay or you want to change it so it's better to change it so let us see how to change it and for global there is a dot git config file get created on the root fold under the root folder and for local it is under git folder we have the config file okay. so let us see that so i'm here and let me say git config and hyphen double hyphen git config hyphen hyphen global and first we give the uh, section name so user dot name and the name so say an example if i want to give raman okay so now this global configuration username i have said so if i say ls hyphen la and so you can see under the root directory there is a dot git configuration file get created and if i open it so if i say cat um, same thing that is tilde slash dot git config so you can see with the output of this command is there is a section user get created and it it has a property now name equals to raman okay so but this is global level so global level means it is applicable to all the uh, all the projects which is git enabled same way if i want to run a command say user dot email okay so i'll give any email address it's, it's not mandatory that it should be a valid email address so i'm just giving this so now if i read that file again so you can see under the user section there is a email address raman at the rate gmail is gmail.com is created so this is the configuration file now let me create a local configuration file to create a local configuration file i will use git config hyphen hyphen local so instead of global i will use local so user dot name say i give a name called raja okay now if i say ls minus la dot git so you can see there is a file which is called config file so if i open this if i say cat dot git slash config file so you can see there is a section get created which is user and name is raja so now say an example i am going to create a file touch 2.txt and if i say git add 2.txt and git commit minus m and i'm saying 2.txt is added okay now it is not giving any error which was saying earlier that related to configuration so if you want to see what are the files get what are the uh, commits i have done you have a command git log now when i run this git log command see here raja is my local username and raman at the rate gmail is my global email so you can see that local is 
is having more preference as compared to the global right and here when it was uh, when I, I did not configure any username or password or uh, username and email then it get recorded with the author name the root user and the host name of my system anyone has any doubt any question Uh, can we integrate the Active Directory users for Git? You, you you can do that. You can do that because here actually what we are doing here you can see if you don't configure anything, then it will take the user who is configure who is currently logged in. So here I have a so it's a normal Linux system, right? And yeah. here. I have the username as the root when I connected to it and my host name was this right so it if you don't configure anything then it will automatically take that uh, author name uh, means your logged in user account okay okay so but uh, so if, if you want to give you with some, um, like uh, you told like earlier some edge process and all at that time uh, somebody will be uh, approving uh, the both merge process so how to right, right. That, uh, that, prioritize those that 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 will come to that will come uh, step by step right okay. okay so 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 far what i have done i have created one dot txt file and two dot txt file and I can see the entries here, right? This is this commit and this commit. So there are two commits happen. So now, say an example, you have file, say touch 3.txt and 4.txt. <coughs> so now two files. Now these two files, I want to move to the. Uh, git local repository one way is that you can add these file one by one to the staging on track to staging other ways that you can move all the files into the stage by using add dot operator so what i mean so if i say git status these two files are untracked so if i say git add dot so git add if i give the file name it will move only that file but if i say git add dot whatever the untracked files all files get moved into the staging now if i say git status so you can see these two files are in the staging now if i say git commit minus m and if i say 3.txt and 4.txt is it so this message is mandatory part which basically helps you to identify that what you have done in that commit so for example uh, if i say git log so here you will not so this is the commit which is a unique number which you cannot remember right author is common here is the message so this message is important so this indicates that during this commit you have added two files 3.txt and 4.txt and this was my message so message is very important and that's why it is a mandatory uh, option you need to use this so commit minus m and then in double course you can give the whatever the message you want to give okay so so far what i have done i have done three commits first commit was when 1.txt is added second commit was when 2.txt is added and third commit when 3.txt and 4.txt was added now i want to create a central repository as well 
so to create a central repository you need to create an account on github okay so you need to go to a website <coughs> github.com okay so it is already logged in for me so let me come out of this and here you need to go to the github.com and you need to create the account so you need to sign up and you need to your username will be your email id and whatever the password you want to set you can set it so after that once your uh, file get created then uh, once your uh, user account get created then means you have created a central repository for you not repository central server for you so we'll create the repository after that so you will get one verification email on your email account you need to verify that now let me sign in okay so now what you want you have created a local repository and that local repository you want to move it or push it to the central repository so for that first you need to create the repository so how to create the repository click on the new and here under your account it will ask the repository name so you can create any name so i'm saying test okay whatever the description you want to give you can give that description so i'm saying testing for the day then you want to create a public or private if you create a public repository then it is means everyone can see it they cannot modify it but they can see it and it is free of cost if you create private so say an example you are saying no i have my own team so only my team members can see it then you can create a private repository and for that you need to pay so i am going to create a public repository if you want to create a readme file so readme file is optional if you want to create it's up to you but i am not creating i am saying create repository so when you use the repository create repository so there is a new repository get created under my username slash the repository name and there is a this is called the clone id so if you click on this it will copy this so this is the url which you can distribute to the others those who wants to access your repository so as i have shared one url of my notes to you so that url is created something like this okay so i i have copied this url so what i will do i am here i want to push the code which i have written on my system to remote repository that is what i want to do so for that i will use git so first you need to uh, add this as a remote repository i means remote uh, url so git remote add origin and this is my repository okay so when you run this command so it means you are saying if i push anything to the remote repository it will go to this repository okay so 
if I say git push origin master. Okay, so first I need to give the username which I have created and it will go to my test repository. Password. Okay, now it is moving my files from my local system to the remote system. So if I go here now, if I refresh this. So now you can see there are three files, four files added to my remote repository. From where? From my local repository. And you can see all the commits are there. See, there are three commits. We have done three commits. In the first commit, 1.txt. Then second commit, 2.txt. And in third commit, 3.txt and 4.txt. So you can see that commits here. Okay. So 1.txt is added. Whatever I have done on my local repository, everything is reflecting here. Okay. So now you can see that you are uh, you are maintaining the repository on your local system, but you are uh, you are pushing it to the remote system in one shot, right? So now the the code the code which you are writing on the local system it is um, that local system now was making the version is very fast because everything is on your local system you just need to connect to the remote system whenever it is required when you think okay all these versions which i have created now i want to push it to the remote repository Anyone has any question, any doubt? Uh, Raman, uh, I think you can hear. Yeah, I've got and This is all understood uh, what we're doing at the moment. Uh, but mm -hmm. In the actual production environment, if I've joined a team today as a developer and uh, They've already got a repository. I will clone that repository onto my local system and uh, I will uh, say make some changes to the code. And uh, when I push those changes onto the GitHub, so can I submit to myself or there should be an authority above me to fetch the code and then uh, submit those changes? Can you please explain that in the scenario? Okay, so. Yes, that also we will discuss that if you want to restrict that these changes are to be uh, so if you see here there is a branch which is called a master branch. Okay, so this master branch is the is the branch we will discuss about that actually then you will understand clearly when we are talking about the branch that how that uh, master branch should not be uh, you know uh, touched by the any other developer only the the person who is the owner of this code he can make the changes into that yeah, okay thank you yeah anyone else has any question okay so now let's continue so we have created one account in github and I have moved the files in my GitHub. All the commit, commit which I have done on my local repository, now it is available on the. So this is the one case when I have the project on my local folder and I'm moving that project or pushing that project onto my remote repository. The second case is that so same example there is already an already a project on the central repository like I have this 1.txt to 4.txt and if I want this project is to be downloaded okay so if you want to download this project then what we'll do so 
so let me just come out of this directory and let me create a another directory say mkdir okay my project if i say okay so if i go to this my project <coughs> Now I want that these files to be copied to my local system. So first I, what I will do, I will use this clone or download. I will copy this URL. Because this is publicly available. So I will write the command git clone and this, right? So when I run this command git clone and the URL, what it will do, it will go to my repository, that GitHub repository, and it will download each and every item of that project. So if I say ls now, so you will find one folder test get created because that is my repository name. So my repository name is test, right? And if I say, uh, cd test ls so you can see 1.txt 2.txt 3.txt and 4.txt files are available here so cloning is basically downloading the latest and greatest uh, project from your uh, directory from from your github to your local directory okay so the other benefit is that when you use the git clone command you need not to do the git init again so if you want to make a local uh, repository or local directory as a um, git enabled uh, directory then basically we need to run first git init command that we have seen right but here you don't need to write the git init command because git clone command automatically makes this project as a git enabled also you need not to set the remote repository because remote repositories automatically get set when you use the git clone command so it means so say an example now i'm going to create one more file say uh, touch say c1 file c1.txt file okay so this is i'm creating under my clone uh, directory where i have created right test and now if i say uh, git add c1.txt okay so now if i say git commit minus m c1.txt is added okay now this is under this this directory right now i need to push it to the my remote repository i am not going to set the remote server for this so i will say git push origin master so master is basically a branch we will talk about what is branch okay now i need to enter the username and the password okay now if i go here and if i reload this page so you can see c1.txt is also added so this is the commit number four right so here you can see uh, c1.txt is added so this way basically you are uh, this way you are basically uh, you know cloning the project as well as you are pushing the code to the remote repository uh, raman i've got a quick question here yeah. Uh, so uh, when you created a new directory and you cloned uh, your test repository into your uh, local system, 
So basically, you got the new book directly, you were pretending to be a taxi user. Am I right? Uh, actually, a voice is breaking. I'm not able to. Uh, right, is, it, is it better now? Yeah, yeah, now it is fine. Yeah. Yeah. So when you created a new directory and you cloned your yeah. test repository into your local system into that directory, and then you pushed right. changes into the central uh, GitHub system once again. So this means you 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 right. were trying to pretend as a new user. No, it's not a new user. So basically what I have done, so the case is something like this. So <clears throat> this is my GitHub. And this GitHub is having some files, 1.txt, 2.txt, 3.txt. So when I cloned it, so these these things are basically uh on branch wise so these are on the master branch okay now when i cloned it so on my local system 1.txt 2.txt 3.txt so here if i say git log okay so here now you can see the author is raman but here you see the author is raja because this this was the local uh, configuration which I have set for the username, right? So now when I moved my c1.txt at that time, because I don't have git config that dot git config, right? So that is only for the local system, only for the DevOps. Now this user, I think you are talking about this, right? So this username is different when when we are submitting. That will now. I did not set any uh, config username for this repository or, or not repository for this uh, local repository. So it takes the username from the global configuration, not from the local. Is that your question? Yeah, it sort of answers my question, but you, you go ahead and uh, if I need, uh, I'll ask the question again. So but, but you carry on with your flow. Okay, so so now when I did a clone here, so when you are doing clone, so this directory which I have created, say say my project directory, under my project directory, so say an example, this file is under uh, repository test, so it will create a test folder here. Under test folder, all these files get stored or downloaded, and when you do a clone, so all the settings, all the settings means whatever the commits happened here, all will be automatically get moved here, as well as remote location automatically get set. So when I create another file, say 4.txt, and if I push, I need not to set the remote location of my GitHub because clone has taken care of all these things. So this is clone. <clears throat> now, when I did a clone, and before that I was having the DevOps directory. In DevOps directory, I am having file one, two, three, and four. And the clone directory, uh, which is test directory, it is having file one, two, three, four, and C1. And this C1 directory, this C1 file is not in the DevOps folder. But both are having the remote location as the my GitHub test repository. Now, if I go back to my DevOps folder, and if I see the file, I, I will not see this C1. And I'm going to create a file, say, 6.txt. When I'm trying to push to the center repository, then it will throw the error. What the error it will be? The error is that because your local repository is not in sync with remote repository. So first, whenever you are pushing, 
the remote repository and local repository should be in the sync so what is the meaning of sync here so if there are files say 4.txt and c1 and here it is up till 4.txt first you need to add c1 then you can add a file and you can push it to the remote repository so let us see how to do that for that uh, if you want to make it in a sync you need to use a pull command so let us see how to do that so i'll go here and now i'm in the test directory if you see there are files 1.txt to 4.txt and c1.txt file now let me go one step above or go to my devops folder now if i say ls here so there is no c1.txt so let me create one file say touch say 5.txt <clears throat> okay so if i say git status this is untracked file so if i say git add 5.txt uh, okay if i say git commit minus m 5.txt is added okay now if i say ls so i have 1.txt to 5.txt but i don't have the c1 file why c1 is important because it is on my remote repository so if i go to my remote repository so there is a file c1.txt now what i want to do i want to move this 5.txt to because up till 4.txt i i have already pushed to my remote 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 repository but 5.txt is not yet moved so i want to move this file to my remote repository so for that if i say git push origin master <coughs> username And the password okay so it is saying failed why it is failed okay so no it is failed because of the rejection okay so it is saying rejection master to master fetch first so it is saying first you need to do the fetch so fetch is same as your pull only so let me run the command git pull origin master because c1 file was not there that's why it is get rejected okay so when you say git pull origin master so it is saying merge with this master i am saying yes i want to do that but i don't want to save this file okay this is in the nano it has opened so nano is an editor so control x do you want to save the changes i will say no okay so now c1 file is uh, that merge with my local repository so if i say ls here so now you can see there is a file c1.txt get added into my local repository now if i say git push origin master if i say okay now if i refresh this page you can see 5.txt is also added okay so i think you understood the difference between clone and pull 
so if there is a git interview this question is very frequently asked what is the difference between git uh, clone and git uh, pull so pull so basically, to sync so basically the, yeah, sorry Raman, I have to interrupt you. So basically cloning is downloading the uh, repository from GitHub for the first time and then whatever changes are made in the central repository to get those changes sync into your local repository, you have to do the pull. Is that the difference? Right, right, right. Yes. So this is the difference, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Just no. another question, uh, Raman. Sorry to interrupt you once again. Uh, well, I mean, you, you've created so many text files here. Say, uh, right. while you're in your DevOps folder, can you change the contents of the text file? So, will Git sniff these changes? Actually, your voice is again, I lost you. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> is it better now? Yeah. Yeah, actually, sometimes it is louder, but in between it goes down. All right, sorry, May. Uh, so I was saying that when you change the contents of a file, so mm -hmm. those changes in the file, say uh, one dot txt, you you put your name in it, and uh, will Git be able to sniff these changes automatically? Uh, that will not be automatically. Again, you need to push it. All right. Okay. Thank you. But when so you for the, any modif any modification, any addition, if you want to sync with your uh, remote repository, you need to use the push command. Okay, so when we push those changes in in the remote repository, and they say another user, he has to pull them again to get the sync. Am I right? So yeah, so until it is pushed, so the other user will get the older version. Okay, that's so fine. Saying, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now this is, and all these commands are on my GitHub repository. So the one which I have shared with you, the DevOps. So here you can see under Git, under Git, Git commands. So I have created all these, uh, you know, almost 45 to 46 uh, commands, not commands, actually kind of a question, created directory DevOps and change the directory. So this is step-by-step -step, uh, uh, commands I have written in this, in, in my notes. Okay, now, next is that, Say an example, there are multiple users. Okay, so user one and user two, and they want to create their own workspace. Okay, so this is say developer one, and this is developer two. So both have downloaded the project from the central repository. Okay, project one. So P1 is here, P1 is here. Okay. Now they want to work independently. So when you when you want that these these developer want the, if these developers work independently, then you create the branches. Okay. So you will create one branch for developer one and create another branch for developer two. So that if tomorrow developer one says that I have made these changes, so you can track it. This these changes are done by developer one. Or if developer two says that I have made these changes, so you can easily identify that this is done by developer one or developer two. So there is a master branch. So whenever you are creating a local repository, by default, there is a master branch get created. And master branch is considered as the main branch. It means the, the project which developer one or developer two is having, 
this is not considered as the production code or or the final code the final code is whatever you are in is in the master but this is a standard but if you want to change you can change it but uh, industry standard is that whatever is in is in the master that is considered to be the final or the production code and most most of the time the owner of the master branch is the person who is like your technical lead or team lead or code reviewer right so these are the owner of this master branch now same example when you are creating a project first time at that time there will be only i have created 1.txt 2.txt 3.txt 4.txt so these files are under master branch now when i create a dev1 branch from the master branch if i say i want to create a dev1 branch so these files are available to this also okay so it will create its own workspace okay it will create on its own workspace even though all are pointing to the same location okay so all are pointing to the devops folder but they are treated as different how different so say an example this is going to create a file number 5 and he has committed this file now this file will not be visible under master branch if you want that file is to be in sync with the master branch then you need to use the merge command okay so so this way we can create the branches so let us see how to create that so i am in the devops folder under devops folder so first thing that if you want to see how many branches has been created so far so the command is uh git branch so if you say git branch so it is showing master so so far there is only one branch which is master and if you want to create a branch so if i say git uh branch and then the branch name so same example i want to create a branch f1 or dev1 will create it so now developer one branch get created so if you want to verify git branch so it will show you there are two branches one is master one is dev1 and this star symbol so this star symbol indicates that which one is active branch so my active branch is master branch okay currently i am inside the master branch and now if you want to remove this branch so you should be out of that branch first then you need to write git branch minus d and then the branch name so i want to delete dev1 branch now if i say git branch now you can see dev1 branch is removed and now let me create again this branch so the command is git branch and the branch name so i am creating dev1 branch now let me go inside the dev1 branch so the command is git checkout dev1 so now i am inside the dev1 branch okay so switch to branch dev1 so if i say git branch now you can see the star is in front of dev1 so it means dev1 branch is my current branch okay now let me see ls if i say ls so all the files which was in the master is automatically referred to dev1 branch okay now if you want to create a branch in remote repository so if you see here if i go to my repository the test repository 
uh, not in the sphere. So I have created test repository, so it should be down here. <laughs> that is test. Okay, I have created a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me open directly. So this test directory, right? This test repository. So here you can see we have only master branch, right? Which is the default branch. Now, if I say git push origin. So, so far I was writing master. Now I will say git push origin and then dev1. So dev1 is my branch name. Okay. Okay, so now it is moved. Now it is saying new branch get created under GitHub test repository. So if I go here and if I refresh this, so you, now you can see there are two branches. One is master branch, one is dev1 branch. So if I go to dev1 branch, it will have the same set of files because, because I, I, I took a uh, uh, same files from the master, right? So this is my master. So you, so this way, basically, you are going to create the. Uh, you are going to create the branches on the remote repository. Okay. <clears throat> so now currently I am in the dev1 branch. So if I say git status, there is nothing to commit. Right. So now I am going to create a file. I am cre creating a file. Say 6.txt file. Or instead of 6.txt, I will create dev1.txt file. And if I say git status, so this file is uh, untracked. So if I say git add dot, and if I say git commit minus m, and I'll say um dev one is added so i will come to know this is from the branch dev one so if i say ls now now you can see there is a dev one branch so if you want to update into the remote repository again git push origin dev one okay Okay, so now if I go here and if I go to my dev1 branch, so you can see there is a dev1.txt file get created. Okay, now if I go back to my master branch, so git checkout master. And if I say ls here, I don't see dev1. Uh -huh. that uh, dev1.txt file. The reason is because this file is under branch dev1, not in master. So now developer one who is working, it has a different working copy and the one which is in the master, it is a different. Now the master branch who is managing 
he found that this is the the changes in the dev1.txt is correct so let's merge this change into the master branch because your master branch is the is having latest and greatest code so what i am going to do here i am saying git and merge so merge command we will use so first you need to move to your master and you need to say git merge and with which branch you want to merge i want to merge with dev1 branch okay now dev1.txt file get merged into the uh, master so if i say git log here actually there is a command in, it is showing lot of information so q to come in so there is a let me open one more tab Yeah, you can do git log one line, I believe. Yeah. So um, if you go to my git command, so there is a. Da, 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 da. This this line. So if I run this, so if I run this command, now it will be showing in the one line, in the graphical modes. So here you can see the last activity happened that there is a merge happened, dev1 is added, right? So now I'm currently my head is towards master and it has done one merge, so dev1 with the dev1, origin dev1 and dev1 is added so before running this command i was in the uh, master branch which was having the files <coughs> c1.txt and whatever the commits you have done in the dev1 branch that is also get recorded here so you have seen there here merge branch master of this right so it has done the merge same way if you go to git branch dev1 sorry git checkout okay and if you run the same command so you can see the the logs are exactly same because now both are merged now let us create one more branch so currently i am in the master branch so to confirm that i will say git branch no i am in dev1 branch <clears throat> okay so if i say git checkout master so I'm in the master branch, even though master branch and dev1 branch both are in sync. So now if I say git branch, say dev2. So there is one more branch get created, which is dev2. And dev2 will have all the files and folder, uh, which, I, which I have for the master branch. So if I say ls here, so there is a, there is some file now what i'm going to do i will move to dev1 branch and dev1 branch will modify this c1.txt file and dev2 is also going to modify this c1.txt file and both they want to merge the changes then there is a conflict happens so what what i am trying to say so So, same example in master. With the master, I have created two branches, dev1 and dev2. And there is a file, say c1.txt file, which is a blank file. Now, dev1 has made the changes into the c1.txt by saying that uh, line added by 
dev1 and dev2 also made the changes say line added by dev2 now when dev1 is going to merge it so there is no conflict and this line will be added here so it will come line is added by d1 now when i am going to merge d2 with c1 then there will be a conflict because master says that c1.txt file is already modified by d1 now i want to modify with d2 so i need to overwrite this so overwriting is not possible someone has to decide so who will decide your code reviewer will decide what to do whether i need to merge it whether i need to remove both the changes whether i need to keep only d1 changes or d2 changes okay so let us see how it works so now i am in the so if i say git branch so i am in the master branch so let me go to the dev1 branch so git check out dev1 okay now mm, git check out dev1 so now what i will do i will modify c1.txt file so i will say echo line is added by dev1 and i want to store this information into c1.txt file okay so if i say cat c1.txt file so this is the line added by so now i will say git status so this file is modified and this is untracked so what i will do git add c1.txt or dot so i'll say git commit minus m c1.txt is modified by dev1 okay so one modification is done now i will go to dev2 branch so if i say git check out dev2 okay now if i say cat c1.txt it should be blank because i did not make any changes into this branch so now if i say uh, echo and if i say line is added by dev2 and this one i want to store under the c1.txt okay and if i say git add dot git commit minus m if i say c1.txt is modified by dev2 okay so now dev1 and dev2 both have modified it so if i say cat c1.txt here so you can see line is added by dev2 now let me go to my master branch so git check out master okay if i say cat c1 here it should be blank because master branch we did not make any change only dev1 and dev2 branches we have made the changes okay so what to do now now we need to merge so if i say uh, git merge dev1 so i am merging master with the dev1 
there is no problem one line is added so now if i say cat c1.txt so there is no problem that line is added by dev1 now dev2 with the dev2 i am going to merge it so if i say git merge with dev2 now here it it is saying it is having a conflict and this concept is called merge conflict okay so during merging i found a conflict and that conflict says that c1.txt file is modified by dev2 and dev1 both so auto merging is not possible so you need to do a manual merging so you need to fix this conflict so how to fix this conflict so i will say git merge tool okay so when you say git merge tool and press enter so it is saying there is some modification okay so what it is saying this message merge dot tool is not configured okay so actually for that we need a editor vim so i'm saying git uh, yum not yum this is ubuntu apt install vim editor okay so then why it is done git merge tool okay if i press enter okay so on this ubuntu machine it is not working resolution is hit to start the merge resolution tool bc oh, one second let me just check git merge dot tool will this work no okay so let me just i think on this operating system i don't know there are something is missing so if i say git merge tool and what it is saying hyphen hyphen tool equals to hyphen hyphen tool equals to if i give this okay <clears throat> yeah so i need to provide the editor so now this is the vim uh, diff this basically which is used for the differentiation or comparison so now here in this tool you can see there are three versions of the file okay so there are three versions of the file so first is this one which is dev1 this is original original means master branch and this is dev2 so now you as a code reviewer you are watching this this is the dev1 changes this is the dev2 changes and this is the master changes and down here you can see what you can make the changes so it is saying currently it is saying dev1 changes is this dev2 changes is this are you going to merge these two changes or what you want to do so that you can make the changes how to do that so here if i want to modify something let's say an example i don't need this line 
so this line is for the i don't need this i you want this line also or not it's up to you you want to remove this you can remove this okay but i am not removing i'm merging these two okay then escape and save this file okay so this is showing that uh, this is the file which is dev1 is having do you want to save it i'm saying no i don't want to save it q exclamation now this file is the main and the but two no i don't want to save it all right so these files are just for the information point of view if you want to keep so now if i say cat c1 dot txt file okay so now you can see my code is merged okay so this way i have resolved my uh, i have resolved my Hello, can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, there was a pause. Yeah, of yeah. Some... actually, there, uh, there was I... some. My system got hung. Yeah. Okay. So, it, uh, anyone has any doubt, any question for this merge conflict? Uh, I've got a little question, Raman. Once again. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, conflict is uh, okay. Let's say Dev1 made some changes. He pushed those changes uh, onto the master. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Now Dev2, before making those changes, if he pulls those changes, I mean, if he gets synced and then make changes to c1.txt, will this conflict here? Yes. So, so whenever, whenever. So whenever there is a merge happen and that file get modified, right? So say an example, c1.txt, if it is, means any circumstances, if that file get modified and, and I'm going to merge with the master. So if it finds the changes, definitely it will raise for the merge conflict. No, that, that's fine. But my question is, say, myself, Rishi is right. I am dev1. Mm. I make some changes mm. to c1.txt. I push those changes and I merge them as well, right? And yeah. you being dev2, before doing anything on c1.txt, if you get sync and get all those changes and do merge afterwards, I think the conflict will not uh, be there in this situation. Okay, so let us do that okay so what we'll do we have one uh, okay so these files get saved right saved it, okay so these there are some unnecessarily file unnecessary files so let me remove that so if i say rm minus i f 
or c1 underscore star dot txt okay so if i say ls now so if i remove rm c1 dot txt dot org and if i say ls if i say cat c1 dot txt right now if you now let us take another file 5 dot txt okay so you are saying that <clears throat> so now let me go and create a branch or if you want to go to that branch you need to sync so if i say git checkout uh, dev one branch okay and there is one modification c1 file is modified right okay so before that let me commit that changes because when i merge it does not commit so we need to commit that first so if i say git status so you can see there is a modified file so if i say git add dot git commit c1 is git commit minus m c1 is modified or merged okay now if i say uh, git status everything is committed now if i say git checkout dev1 okay and now if i say git actually merge and rebase master so rebase is also same as your merge but there is some graphical difference so it will basically a graphical log difference okay so if i say git checkout uh, if i say cat c1.txt so these are the lines so rebase and uh, merge both are same but whenever we are doing branch to uh, master merging we can use merge but rebase what it does it basically uh, graphically whatever the changes master does it keep in one uh, set of lines and the changes which is done by the br branches it will make another set of lines it does not merge together okay so now i'm going to git checkout and <clears throat> dev2 okay and let me first thing so i'm saying git rebase and master okay so here it is conflict because oh, one second rebase okay so here conflict happened because there is a, yes yes so resolve all conflict so so again i need to do that uh, merge tool because again it is going to uh, you know there is a conflict happened so what i will do i will create a branch instead of uh, you know solving that merge uh, tool again so what i will do uh, git checkout master and i will say or i will say git rebase hyphen hyphen skip first here okay if i say git checkout master okay now if i say git branch dev 3 okay git checkout dev 3 and if i say cat c1.txt this is okay now tell me what you want to do so let's I make have... some changes in dev3 yeah let's make some changes 
Okay, so let me take another file. So I will say echo uh, five uh, or three dot txt file is modified by dev three. And I'm storing it in txt file. Git add dot git commit minus m modified by depth three okay now let's merge them git checkout master git merge dev three okay yeah. now now let's check now let's check out to them two now go to dev dev one right so git check out dev one at this stage can we not sync whatever dev three has done that was my question can we not pull the changes what dev three has into done dev, into, into dev, dev one? one yeah we can do that git. Right, let's just do it git merge or get rebase dev one oh, sorry master okay cat oh, sorry not c1 cat 3 dot txt yeah that's fine so now if yeah. uh, again under dev one let's just take some changes to this file and let's just try merging and let's see what happens this time okay so you are saying uh, adding a new line by uh, dev one right and uh, into 3.txt file so if i say git add dot git commit minus m add it by dev1 okay okay, okay let's so try now, merging now okay git check out master okay now git merge dev1 yeah there is no conflict yeah this was my question yeah that's fine thank you okay okay so if i say cat 3.txt so there is a merge okay now <clears throat> now let us take uh, other examples so same example now if i say git uh, if i copy that command okay so this is good so if we use this okay so there are different things so see if uh, so this is my i'm in the master branch so if i say i want to modify a file say one.txt so if i say cat a line is added okay so not so it is not cat echo okay a line is added and i'm storing it into one dot txt file okay so if i say git add if I say one dot txt is modified, 
Okay. Sorry. Dot get commit minus m one dot txt is modified. Okay. So now file is modified. If I say if I run that <coughs> command. So now you can see there is one more entry in the log which says one dot. So this is the commit ID and this is the commit ID. So we have two commit IDs when it was added. Now if I if you want to see the difference, so you can say git diff between this commit and this commit. Okay, so you can see the difference. Actually, there are a lot of difference in between. But here I'm looking for 1.txt only. So for 1.txt, the difference is that a line is added. So that was plus, uh, means with the first, earlier it was blank. And when I did the last commit at that time, it was a line is added. So this difference it is showing. Okay. Now, Let us do some more modification into this file. So if I say echo and if I say line two is added. Okay, and I'm adding it into one dot txt file. Again, I will say get add dot git and i'll say commit minus m and i will say one dot txt is modified again okay so this file is modified again so if i say again git line so you can see there is one more change happened and now i if i say cat 1.txt so you can see now there are two lines first line when i did the commit in the previous version and second line is when i add it into the latest version so now I want to revert back the changes. Okay. So if you want to revert back the changes, so say an example, I want to revert back this changes. So I will say git revert and the commit ID. Okay. So it is saying there are some modification is happening. Are you okay with that? And I'm saying yes. Okay. So there is one deletion happened. So now if I say cat, 1.txt so that deletion is done so what is that deletion is done that second commit was line 2 is added that is removed and it moved to the previous version so that is git revert command uh, rama now i want i've decided that no i actually needed that line and i want to go back to uh, that commit where the line two was added is it possible line two is added you want to go to that commit so uh, with the revert it is not possible but yes we have the other way so how to do that so say an example if i say cat one dot txt so there is one line and i will create a tag so if i say git tag and i'm saying v0 so this is my version 0 okay now if i say if i am going to make some changes into 1.txt file so if i say echo line 2 is added okay 
to one dot txt file. Okay, git add dot git commit minus m second line is added. Okay, so if I say cat one dot txt, so you can see line two is added. Now I will say git tag version one. So this is my version one. So previous was my version zero. Now, now if you want to revert back to the previous version, so you will say git checkout v0. So if you say now you are on the v v0. Okay. So if I say cat. Okay. So it is giving. So now I have the line one added, right? Now, if you want to see the line number two, so I will say git checkout v1. So now I'm in the v1 branch, uh, v1 version. So if I say cat 1.txt, now you can see there are two lines. So now you can switch to any version. So, say an example, you have multiple releases. And you are saying that I want to go to release one or release two or release three or release five to release one. So you basically define the tags for that. Yeah. Thank you, Raman. Answers my question. Yeah. Okay. So now let me see what else is there. Okay, so there is one stash command. So what is the stash command? So say an example, um, I'm in a branch. So if I, so I mix up a lot of things. So let me just come out of this and let me create one folder. Say test folder cd test and if i say get init here initialize a directory and i have touch one dot txt file okay and if i say git uh, add dot git and commit minus m and one dot txt is added <laughs> okay now if i create a branch so if i say git branch say f1 so now if i go to my branch so git checkout branch f1 right now here it will have one dot txt so now let me create one file two dot txt and if i say git add two dot txt now i'm not committing it so if you don't commit your code then the untracked or your uh, stage files and folders will be visible to another branch so it means if i say git checkout master and if i say ls so you can see 2.txt file is visible here which i don't want i want that if i have not made any changes then this file should be invisible to the others to do that you need to use the git stash command so if I say git checkout uh, f1 and if I say git stash okay so now which is not committed that files and folders will not be shown here to the master so if I say git checkout master and if i say ls now you cannot see 2.txt file so you will be working on that 
finish the changes now you will go back to your Uh, you will go back to your F1 branch and use you will say uh, git stash pop so with this command now this file is available now you can say git commit minus m 2.txt is added now once it is committed into the particular branch so definitely it will not be visible to the other branch so if i go here and if i say ls this will not be visible until unless you do the merge so this is git stash command now if you see my uh, github repository right so so this is my test right so if you want that so say an example you also have the same repository and you want to copy my repository into your because you will not have the access to modify the content of my github repository so in case if you want that you want to download this public repository what you can do you can click on the fork so if i give you this clone id you can open it and you can fork it so all the content of that directory will automatically come to your git repository okay so that is fork and say an example you want to delete this or or you want that multiple uh, persons can work on one git repository so this is the central repository and there is a team and you want to give the access of the read and write to the multiple team members so for that you need to go to the settings and you need to click on the collaborators so collaborators here you need to give the uh, git id for the person who is your in your team who wants to work on this so like for me it is <clears throat> so this is one of my other account so if i say this and add collaborator then what will happen there is one invitation goes to my email account whichever i have registered for the git and i need to confirm it so once i accept it then then uh, I can also do the modification into this repository. So that is the collaborators. And under the settings, you can rename your repository whenever you want. And if you want to delete, you can delete as well. If you want to make it private, archive, or delete this repository so whenever you are deleting you need to give the please type this so i need to type this okay so this will remove the repository okay so that's it from my side about the git anyone has any doubt any question and all the commands you can find under my devops notes uh, Raman, so, uh, just, just a quick question mate. um can we create a branch within a branch mm -hmm. branch yeah, my question was, can we create a branch within a branch? Like, can we create some branches? No, 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 only one level. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I have and, shared this again, GitHub, my repository. Yeah, go ahead. And, and also the, the, the last question. Can you summarize all this? Like, I mean, I, I know everything you said now in the technical scenario and the environment. Uh, who decides to 
make branches like would be the developer or would be the code reviewer or the team lead code reviewer or or the technical lead who designed that coding so he he decides that basically your technical lead who is uh, handling the project so he decides that these are the branches i need to create and this branch is for this developer this branch is for that developer so when we clone that repository so all those branches will be cloned as well and uh, how the branches will be distinguished between different developers Uh, so when you clone it basically it clone the so say an example i'm here right so if i say uh, where is oh i have removed that here i have only master actually that you can try it out when you clone it git clone i don't think it will clone all the branches okay so what is your question so the, the the question was actually the extension to your explanation when i said who creates branches you said it would be the technical lead that's understandable right so right. say you, you you are the technical lead and you've got this repository the repository we on at the moment on github right but at the same mm -hmm. time you've already created some branches right for someone, say for developer one. Now I have joined your team as a new member. You, you've given me the uh, URL to clone or download the this repository. So will the branches will be downloaded for me as well? Uh, that I have never tried to be very honest. That you can try it. Actually, I have removed that uh, repository so but in real time scenario what happens so say an example there is a new developer who who joins so technical lead basically creates the branch for for that particular developer from the master branch so it is not uh, he is not giving the url or so if you see here if i say url okay so this this is different for the master and different for the uh, particular so i don't think that branches will be uh, copied to that so if there is a branch there will be a different clone id that is what my assumption but that you need to just uh, you know you can check it out but in real time scenario what we do so say an example there is a developer joins our team so if i am a technical lead i create a branch and I give the access to that branch only to that particular developer by saying that you need to work on this. So it's not the developer who is cloning the thing. It's a, basically we we as a develop we as a technical lead who is creating the branch and you know just ask them you can use that branch. So he will access the only the that particular branch. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest. Want to study further? Subscribe to our paid membership to get a deep dive into each and every topic. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our DevOps School channel and hit the bell icon to learn more. Keep learning!